please give a warm Delray Beach welcome to Dick Lowenthal and a tribute to Benny Goodman. Randy Emmerich on clarinet. And good evening. My name is Dick Lowenthal, as Suzanne said. We are very happy to be here. This is our third straight sold out New Year's performance, and uh, we love playing for all of you. The name of that tune was Let's Dance, and that was uh, from a 1934 radio show of the same name that some people might remember. It was called the Nabisco Radio Hour. All right. And that show had featured three big bands. Benny Goodman was the swing big band. Somebody named Kel Murray, who I'm not quite sure what ever became of him, but he was the sweet band. And a young Cuban band leader by the name of Xavier Cougat was the other band on that show. So tonight's performance will be Benny Goodman and Friends, the music of Goodman, Gene Krupa, Harry James, and Lionel Hampton. So I have some meaningless trivia that I'll tell you throughout the performance. Many of the students from the past year and a half of jazz and jab are here tonight. Uh, Goodman was born in 1909, passed away in 1986. Uh, at 19, here's some really meaningless trivia. 19 years old, living in New York City, he made money by swiping milk bottles with Glenn Miller and cashing them in for breakfast money. Um, 1930, he played in the pit, a uh, Broadway show called Strike Up the Band. Also in the pit were Glenn Miller and a young drummer by the name of Gene Krupa. In 1934, he hires Krupa as he's putting his band together. And he buys three arrangements of a very, very talented band leader back then named Fletcher Henderson for $37.50. 1936, he discovers a player that was playing drums and another instrument called the Viperphone. His name was Lionel Hampton. And then finally in 37, he added two trumpet players. One of them was Ziggy Elman, and the other one was, of course, who was that? Harry James. Right, absolutely. So we'd like to continue our program. Here's a 1934 arrangement of Edgar Sampson, named after a very, very famous ballroom in Harlem in New York City. It was called the Savoy Ballroom, and this is stomping at the Savoy.
Uh, you heard from Courtney Jones on trumpet. Greg Diaz on tenor sax. Marty Freed on clarinet. And Dante Luciani on trombone. Anybody ever been to the Savoy Ballroom? Oh, I, I think I heard a yes. Okay, how about that? Great. Uh, so, moving along on our, our program... Uh, he had, Betty Goodman had a lot of wonderful vocalists over the years, and we'd like to do a tune now from, uh, he recorded in 1940, that features our fabulous vocalist. Her name is Lizanne Lyons, a great jazz performer, uh, jazz educator, won several awards, and we are very pleased. This is our second concert we are doing together, and she has a concert on February 17th. Tickets are going very quickly. Make sure you get tickets for her. And Wendy Peterson, Jazz Meets Broadway. So I think you'll enjoy that. Anyway, this, this next piece is based on a classical piece of music by Chopin, the very famous classical pianist and composer. And um, this is called I'm Always Chasing Rainbows. It was recorded by Benny Goodman and Helen Forrest in 1940. Lausanne Lyons. Thank you. 
Lizanne Lyons. On clarinet, Marty Freed. And on tenor sax, Greg Diaz. The next song that we'd like to do for you um, was written by a trumpet player by the name of Henry Finkelman. Now that doesn't ring a bell, right? You don't know who Henry Finkelman is. But he did, with his name like that, he changed his name to Ziggy Elman. Okay, so you can see why. So he wrote this tune, lyrics by Johnny Mercer, and it was recorded by, see what you, you didn't know that. <laughs> It was recorded by Benny Goodman and Martha Tilton in 1939, and we are going to feature in the trumpet part of Ziggy Elman, his famous chorus, Dave Gibble on trumpet. Here is And the Angels Sing. difficult to do. And Lizanne Lyons on vocals. How about another hand for Dave? That really is hard to do. Dave Gibbles. Dave is the head of the jazz program at Palm Beach State College. Went to school uh, at a friend of mine's school in the University of North Texas and uh, played in their very famous one o'clock band there. So we are very happy to have Dave here tonight. So the next player we'd like to tribute, and we're gonna come back to Benny Goodman. You're not done with Benny Goodman. We're gonna be back with him. 
But the, the next player we'd like to play some music from was a vibraphone player and drummer born in 1908 and passed away in 2002. He was discovered by Benny Goodman in 1936 and played with Goodman's trio and quartet until 1940. What's really important about that, particularly in this day and age, is that the trio and quartet were among the first racially integrated jazz group to perform before audiences. That was made up of Teddy Wilson, and Gene Krupa, Benny Goodman, and Lionel Hampton. It was very, very important at that time. He left Goodman in 1940 and formed his own big band. Some of the players that played in Hamp's big band, uh, trumpet players named Dizzy Gillespie, Clifford Brown, and another person named Quincy Jones, who went on to become very, very famous as an arranger in Hollywood, a producer, and produced that year that Michael Jackson won, I think, 13 Grammys. He produced that one particular album. So very, very famous bass player, Charlie Mingus, and a young vocalist by the name of Dinah Washington played with that band. So we are very fortunate, just like we have Luzanne and all of these wonderful players in the band to have a great vibes player. He did a concert here last week. He teaches jazz very much in demand as a performer, as a jazz educator. We're happy to have Drew Tucker. Please welcome him to the bandstand. So we're going to do some music that was uh, arranged for Lionel Hampton's Big Band. This was the theme song of Ham's Big Band, and this is called Flying Home. Flying home. 
Jack Rangowski on trumpet. Drew Tucker on vibraphone. Greg Diaz on tenor saxophone, the band. So we'd like to go on um, and do a couple of small group tunes. Drew, why don't you tell us what tunes they're gonna play? That's mainly because I don't know. <laughs> so he's gonna tell you what tunes you're gonna play. We're going to play a um, slower tune because the vibraphone sounds really nice when you play it slow. So we're going to play a, a popular song, popular for many, many years, called Tenderly.
Before I do this last one, I just wanted to uh, thank Dick Lowenthal for allowing me to tribute one of my heroes. It's very, it's very rare that someone's like, hey, vibraphone guy, come tribute another vibraphone guy <laughs> in a public concert. Um, it's just really rare and I'm, I'm super grateful. So Dick, thank you. Thank you very much. for these guys. That, that's some fabulous playing you're hearing. All right, the last two we're going to do uh, as a tr uh, tribute to Lionel Hampton. Toward the end of the 40s and into the early, uh, 50s, it became almost like a rhythm and blues band, which was the same time you were listening to Bill Haley and the Comets and everything, and Ham started doing a lot of rhythm and blues. So we'd like to do a tune for you. That was, comes from Hamp's band, recorded several times, and this is called Hamp's Boogie.
trombone, Mike Pignola on Barry Sachs, Paul Suchak on bass, Drew Tucker on vibraphone, So then the last person we'd like to tribute on this half of the concert was the drummer with the Benny Goodman Orchestra, and of course that was Gene Krupa. Krupa was born in 1909, died in 1973. He joined Benny Goodman in 1934. They had a very famous Carnegie Hall jazz concert. It was the first jazz band really to play at Carnegie Hall in 1938. No one knew what was gonna happen. Everybody was very uptight. But the band really broke it up, and from then on, Goodman's band was very, very popular. Two months after the, the big 1938 concert, Krupa and Goodman finally had, had it with each other, and they split up, and Krupa founded his own band. Why did they split up, you might add. You were going to ask that, I think. Why did they split up? They argued over the tempo, how fast or slow a piece should be. Okay? But they weren't done. They argued over the volume of the band, 
how loud Krupa should play, how loud that the band should play. And finally, they argued over who was getting more applause, Goodman or Krupa. <laughs> so they finally packed it in and Krupa went on to form his own band. He formed a band that had the great Anita O'Day as a vocalist, Roy Eldridge as a trumpet player. And over the years, he had a lot of the young and upcoming bebop players. Red Rodney was in the band, Jerry Mulligan was in the band. So we'd like to play a, a very little known piece of, from the Krupa band. This is the theme song of the Krupa band called Starburst. So here was a tune that finished, um, that featured, not finished, it featured uh, Anita O'Day. She was really known as, back then, as like a, a hip chick singer. She didn't want to be known as one of the cutesy girl singers. She wanted to be known as the, as the hip chick singer, one of the guys in the band. So this is a tune that was made famous by Anita O'Day and a trumpet player by the name of Roy Eldridge, a great trumpet player that kind of linked Louis Armstrong and Dizzy Gillespie together. So we'd like to have, Lizanne and Mike take the roles of um, Roy Eldridge and Anita O'Day. Here is Let Me Off Uptown. By the way, the name of that title, Uptown, meant that you were going from Midtown Manhattan, those of you who are not from New York, and you were going uptown. You would take what train? The A train. Good. And you would go up uptown to Harlem to all the clubs that were up there. So this is Let Me Off Uptown.
Roseanne Lyons, Jack Rangrowski, Let Me Off Uptown. Thank you, thank you. We're going to do one more tune and then take a brief intermission and then we'll come back with more music of the Benny Goodman Orchestra and Harry James. So please stick around. This was Krupa's really first big hit. It was called Drum Boogie. Oh, and this is the one, audience participation. Uh-oh. All right, so this is not hard. There's only one word. Boogie. That's all. It's not hard to remember that word. So I'm going to cue you, and I will give you one, two, three, four, and you will shout out. Boogie. Oh, boy. Let's try that again. One, two, three, four. Boogie. Ah, there we go. Okay. It pays extra if you do that, really. All right, so here is Drum Boogie, but stay awake. Because the success of this tune is how you shout out boogie, okay? Don't you haven't forgotten the word yet, I hope. Okay, do come back. We'll see you in about 15 minutes. Thank you. Well, you're back. Would you like to hear a little bit more? Okay. 
It's a good, we have to have another 400 charts to play for you. That's okay. uh, all right, we're going to start this half of the program with a great trumpet player. His name is Harry James. And we're going to open the second half of the program with a theme song. Alberto Pestalozzi in 1898, but you didn't know that. It became the theme song of the Harry James Orchestra. Harry James uh, Orchestra in 1939. This is Cheery Beery Bin. <laughs> Trumpet. Harry James was born in 1916, died in 1983. He was the son of a circus band uh, conductor. He joined Benny Goodman in 1937, started his own band in January of 1939. You might have heard of one of his singers. His name was Frank Sinatra. Uh, he was paying Sinatra $75 a week at the time. Sinatra left after seven months to join Tommy Dorsey. And another vocalist that James had was Helen Forrest and a drummer by the name of Buddy Rich. Played drums in, in uh, James's band. This is kind of interesting. In 1942, he replaced Glenn Miller on the Chesterfield Cigarette Radio Show when Miller entered the, uh, entered the Army Air Force Band. And there is a recording that you can listen to of Miller saying that he'd be joining the Army Air Force Band and would like to turn over the radio show to the Harry James Orchestra. You can actually listen to that. Some of you might remember Kirk Douglas in a movie called Young Man with a Horn. Harry James dubbed all the trumpet playing for that particular motion picture. Um, his most famous of his three wives was, of course, who? Betty Grable. Absolutely right. They studied this. Can you hear that? Right? There is, it's good. We're going to bring back Lizanne again to, to do a tune that was written by Julie Stein and the lyrics by Sammy Kahn. Originally featured in 1942. Helen Forrest, here is I've Heard That Song Before. Thank you. 
before It's from an old familiar score I know it well, that melody It's funny how a theme Recalls a favorite dream A dream that brought you so close to me I know each word Because I've heard that song before The lyrics said forevermore Forevermore Some memory Roseanne Lyons, Dave Gibble on trumpet. And one other tune we'd like to do, this is from 1943. You might have heard of this, Sammy Kahn again, Julie Stein, and it's been a long, long time. Roseanne Lyons, Dave Gibble on trumpet. And for the final little segment of uh, Harry James, I'm sure many of you know that the Count Basie Orchestra, their famous song was One O'Clock Jump. Not to be outdone. 
Harry James, uh, Benny Goodman, and even Count Basie had a hand in writing something called Two O'Clock Jump. So we'd like to play uh, Two O'Clock Jump for you. We'll feature a lot of the players of the band, and we're gonna start off at letter A. That's meaningless to them, but that's okay. We're gonna start at letter A, and the rhythm section, Jim and Paul, and uh, Mike starting off with some blues, okay?
Would you like to hear a little bit more from Drew Tucker? But he went home. No, he's still here. Drew, they'd like to hear a tune. I bet you they'd like to hear Honeysuckle Rose. Did you hear that applaud? this together right now don't mind us talk amongst yourselves Paul Suchat, Jim Gazer, and Jack Chiano on drums. Thank you. He's going to be back for our rousing finish. You might have wondered why did we do Honeysuckle Rose? Because on the 1938 Carnegie Hall concert, the Benny Goodman concert, they did a jam session in the middle of the concert that featured some people from the Goodman Band and some people from Count Basie's orchestra. Duke Ellington's orchestra, Basie played, Ellington didn't want to play that night. Uh, so that they jammed on Honeysuckle Rose. A lot of you, I, I put, or Suzanne did, two of these on every table. You can fight after them to take them home. But this comes from a book that um, we were able to get in the uh, wonderful used bookstore in Great Barrington in the Berkshires. Some of you probably have been there, right? 
And uh, what I love, uh, it's the front page of the, the program. And it has Benny Goodman and his swing orchestra appearing uh, at Carnegie Hall. Everybody was very nervous. The promoter, by the way, was Saul Hurok, who Leonard went on to become a, have a major career as, as a producer. But I love if you read the fire notice. And it says, look around now and choose the nearest exit to your seat. In case of fire, walk, not run to that exit. Do not try to beat your neighbor to the street. <laughs> it's right here. It was on the program. You can see that right on the program. I thought that was kind of, kind of inter <laughs> interesting. Yes, thank you. Um, the opening tune of the, of the Carnegie Hall concert was something that they wanted to relax the band. The band was very uptight. Uh, this was the first time, as I said before, a jazz band playing at Carnegie Hall, an interracial jazz band playing at Carnegie Hall, and uh, they wanted a tune that would relax the whole band. So they opened the program with Don't Be That Way. It was the first tune on there. It was originally written for the drummers uh, by the name of Chick Webb, who later went on, Ella Fitzgerald won a contest to sing with Chick Webb, etc. And this is... Uh, by Edgar Sampson. Here is Don't Be That Way. Thank you. 
Jack Chiano on drums. Dante Luciani on uh, trombone. Randy Emmerich on clarinet. And Jack Rangrowski on trumpet. So we'd like to feature again, uh, Lausanne. This was a, a big tune again. And this was written by Sholem Secunda and the words by Sammy Kahn, written originally for the Second Avenue Yiddish Theater. In English, it means, to, to me, you are beautiful. And this is by mere Mr. Shane. Marty Freed on clarinet. So the tune that finally wrapped up the program was written by Jimmy Mundy. And, uh, it was written by Louis Prima. Oh, Louis Prima. And arranged by Jimmy Mundy. And featured a gentleman who was going to be out of the band two months later. His name was Gene Krupa. And this, of course, was Sing, Sing, Sing. And Drew is going to join us. This is a big finale where everybody's going to get involved with this. Um, and so they did Sing 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 to close the program. And of course, Krupa left right after that. Before we do, I want to thank, how about a nice round of applause for our sound man back there. They very rarely have an 18-piece big band here. We've had... Uh, Tito Puente, we've had Ed Calle, usually with about an eight or 10 piece fan, but not an 18 piece fan. They did a wonderful job putting this together, so we thank you. And to, to Suzanne and all of the uh, staff, uh, Marjorie, uh, helping us put this concert together, to the Guild. And any of you that would, would like to join the Guild, please read in your program about how to join. They're an integral part of the um, operations of the Arts Garage, helping out with all the concerts and the fundraising. And as Suzanne mentioned, we have the great Kermit Ruffins coming in uh, in a couple of weeks. 
a great Dixieland uh, group. You might have seen the HBO special Tree May, and they had a featured role in that uh, throughout the, the whole run of that show. They introduced Stu Grant, please support live music. It's very, very important, very important. And in this day and age where funding is being cut left and right in the arts, it's even more important to come out and support venues like this. And down in South Florida, at the Amateur Theater and a few of the other theaters that have you know, some really great jazz performances. So we thank you as performers here for supporting live music. It's, it's very, very important. Keep doing it. Keep listening to his radio station. Uh, there's not many of them around here. So, you know, that's important also. I think that's enough talking, right? Here is the closer from the 1938 Carnegie Hall concert. And what I want you to picture is the lights go dim. Gene Krupp is surrounded by several tom-toms, big tom-toms, little tom-toms on the floor, spotlights on each one of the tom-toms. You can see why Goodman hated this. But, but you know, and of course the feature was throughout the whole uh, tune of Sing 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 was Gene Krupa. Here is Sing Sing Sing. It's, it's all about Jack. Both Jacks. All about.
Jack Ciano on drums. Jack, take a bow. They love you. Thank you. We hope to see you again. Please have a happy and healthy new year. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.